in order to understand how to build a responsive site, you need to understand the different types of mobile or device-friendly sites that we can create, the different ways to do it, rather. I've got this site here, which hopefully is still around, uh, liquidappsive.com. You can go to it if you want to, and I think it's a great way to be able to see how things work. Right now, we have, and I chose this, but you're going to see right up here in the corner, we have the ability to choose the type of layout that we're working with. Forever in a day, we had what's called a static layout, and that was the, the New York Times site that we took a look at. So if I were to choose that and take the browser window and just go a little smaller, you'll see that it's centering itself. That's great. But if I go a little smaller, you'll see it doesn't do anything else, doesn't react. On a smaller device, this is actually, this right here is going to just shrink. It's going to get smaller in the device. So on a phone, the left edge of the phone will be here, the right edge will be over here. Okay. Now the different types of methodology, the different ways that we can make a site respond or work better in certain device sizes is to use something like adaptive. We can use liquid layouts, which a lot of times go hand in hand with responsive. It depends on who you're talking to, but and then we have responsive, fully responsive. Let's talk about liquid first. Liquid and responsive a lot of times will go together. Okay, but a truly liquid site, if you watch, is basically a bunch of content that's based on relative sizing, based on things like percent. Okay. So if we say let's make this liquid, if you watch as I close, now it's gonna screw up here, but Basically, everything is just changing width relative to the size of the browser window. So let's say that this column right here was set at, I don't know, 70% or something like that. It would always stay 70% of the browser window width. So this is what's called a liquid layout. And you'll notice that all basically just the layout is changing. You're going to see the content isn't really doing much. It's just kind of reflowing in there. Okay. Now let's take a look at a responsive layout. So I'm going to go to responsive here. A responsive layout is one that, and this doesn't fully fully represent it in some ways, because a responsive layout, we can have a maximum of size too. So you can have a layout that just stops at a certain size and says, that's it. But once the browser window goes narrower, if you watch, you can see right here, it's going to be liquid. So things are kind of changing size in some ways. Not always, but some things are. But notice this sidebar right here when we get narrow enough. It's responding to the viewport by actually changing the design content. So we're saying, okay, if you're large enough, if the browser or the viewport, the thing you're looking at is big enough, we're going to have three columns. If we get it narrow enough, let's say we get to a tablet device or something like that, we're going to only have two columns. We're going to take that other column and a lot of cases just stick it somewhere else. We're going to unfloat it or move its, you know, different positioning. If we get even small enough, then we start to go into mobile and we start to take a look at how can we just make things simpler. A lot of times you'll see on mobile devices, if you look at a website, it's going to it's gonna usually be a single column. Okay, it kind of depends on what the content you have and the really cool jQuery stuff, but typically it's going to be a single column like this. It's a little bit easier to read and you can see things happening. So this is a responsive layout. Now, the, a couple of things to, to think about here. Um, one thing is that it is responding to the size of the browser, and we'll just call it the size of the browser right here, okay? It's responding, responding to the inside here, okay? They call that typically the viewport. Now, a lot of designers will do this, myself included, will take the corner of the browser window and do this and say, oh, okay, well, looks good here, doesn't look good right there, so we need to change it. The idea behind a responsive design is that it's going to look good in all the different devices we have. Now, if... If we only had three devices, three device sizes, like literally, let's suppose we only in the world had the desktop browser, we had an iPhone and an iPad. Okay, and I know I'm not going towards Apple, I'm just picking something. That would be easy because we know how wide the iPhone is, we know how big the iPad is. So what we could do is we could, we wouldn't have to worry about say this wide, we just have to worry about iPad wide, let's say like right here, and iPhone wide, which is maybe right here, okay? But because there are so many different devices out there, we create a responsive design that, let's suppose you go with an iPhone 4 versus an iPhone 5S or a Galaxy S4 or something like that, some big, bigger handheld device. You got to make sure it's going to work in a lot of these devices and doesn't doesn't look dumb. People can use the, the site then. So if you go in different size, let's say a, a Kindle versus a, a full iPad, that type thing, 
got to make sure it works. Okay, it looks good. That's why we try to test on different devices and get it to, to happen. That's responsive. It's using Fluid. A lot of times it's using Fluid. But it's also kind of adapting the layout as the, the size changes to, to figure out how it works. The last type we can use is what's called adaptive, fully adaptive. Now, responsive and liquid typically simply rely on styling and CSS to make things change, to make things move. And we use a lot of times what are called media queries to get this done. We have a whole video on talking about media queries. Don't worry about that. Adaptive is a little different. If I go to an adaptive layout, an adaptive layout tends hmm, tends not to be fluid in a lot of cases. It can. It can, it, it can inject some in fluid you know, pieces to it. But what it tends to do instead is instead of being fully fluid, fully responsive, it actually tends to look at the size of the device. And if it's a certain size, it changes the layout. You can see right here, this is a, an adaptive layout. So in this case, it's not using anything fluid. It's just adapting using either scripting or it's using different style sheets, maybe the same content. There's a lot of ways to get this done. But it's important that when you see a design, you like to look at it and see how it reacts to a device. Look at it on different devices. Take your browser window on your hard drive, on your desktop like this, and start to resize it and see what happens. It's not always going to be exactly the same, but this is one way we can take, check things out. So these are the different ways, different methods we can work with. Now, here's an example of an adaptive de design. It's called screamingfrog.co.uk. There's a bunch of them out there, actually. And if you notice, you'll see, okay, it's the same size. Don't forget about the green background here. That's actually looks good, though. Watch what happens when I get small enough. It's going to adapt. So it's going to use either a set of different styles or JavaScript to figure out how wide the viewport is. And it suddenly starts to adapt and change. That means that things are not going to be responding and fluid, but it's going to fit within the devices. And suppose we had an iPad mini like this, and I don't know why I'm using this, maybe like a, a Kindle versus a full iPad. Okay, and I'm just guessing sizes here, but you'll see that on the Kindle, it'll be pretty tight, but on iPad, the full iPad, you'll have a little room around it. If you get large enough, go to desktop or a, a different orientation on the device, you'll see something like that. So we have adaptive, we've got responsive, we've got fluid, which is part of usually responsive. We have a million others. There's progressive enhancement, which is part of uh, fluid and others, or adaptive rather. There's a lot of different terms you're going to hear thrown out there. I'm not mentioning all of them, but these are the big ones. Another alternative, another method, which some companies will use because it makes sense, is to have a completely different mobile site, which can be good, can be bad. Um, a lot, all these different things have different uh, good and bad, if you will. Uh, if you decide, let's say like walmart.com, I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to load a different, uh, a different, uh, completely different site for a different device. I'm going to go to the iPhone at, uh, here and we'll go into the simulator. And what I'll do is I'll go to my bookmark. Whoops, I'll go to my bookmarks rather and take a look. And I've got Walmart Mobile right here. And you'll see the Walmart mobile version. So you're going to see it a lot of times it has a completely different URL. It could be it usually we used to use a lot of like dot mobi or you know mobile like that. But it's using a different URL. A lot of times it uses different content, different styling, uh, things like that. It can share content depending on the size. But but that's a, another method that we can use and a lot of big sites, really big sites will will make a mobile site or a mobile version. So it, it really depends on your budget how things work, your setup on the back end, different things like that. Hopefully a lot of this makes sense. And a lot of this you've probably already seen. So I just wanted to bring it to the front and show you the different methods here. Now, with all of that in mind, what we are going to do is we're going to focus on responsive design, which essentially means that we're going to have one set of content, one set of HTML and pictures and, well, not always. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. And we're going to have styling that's going to determine how it's going to be styled in the different sizes. So up next, we are going to start to talk about what are called media queries and breakpoints.